work book today? Yeah. They're here to have fun. I, I often hear them say, yay, we're in math class. There's not a lot of whining or complaining, which is awesome. I mean, they're just motivated to work and to get going. Once you're logged into Moodle, you can um, start the warm up. And while you're doing the warm up, I'm going to be walking around and checking for two things. If you did your homework, which I hope you did, you should. So typically the students come to class, uh, they have already watched a video on the math concept the night before. Um, they've answered three to five problems um, on our Moodle. So right away I know who gets it, who does not. Um, typically when class starts I just do a, a simple warm up to kind of um, see if they really do get it. You can quickly um, assess who has done the, the homework or not. Do you have any other computers at your house? Did you watch it on there? Why? Um, I expect a lot uh, from my students, but I also expect a lot from myself. Um, every single day in every single class, uh, when I'm walking in or I'm there, it is my goal to make it fun and happy. Um, I see a lot of kids who, when they come in the doors from school, you know, they're just, they might not want to be there. And so I, my first job before I even start thinking about the math is they need to want to be in the spot they're at in my class. And if they're not having fun and they don't feel like this is a good thing, then I'm not going to get as much out of them. So <laughs> it's if you don't do your homework, it's kind of hard, isn't it? <laughs> this is my first year of flipped instruction. The kind of downside to it is you still have students who come unprepared. But it actually works out better because they still end up finding a time and place to do this homework. Where in the past, if they came to class and didn't have their book work assignment done, Half the time, I still would never see it. So what I'm noticing is the students who still do come unprepared find time to come in at lunch. I have so many kids saying, can I come in at lunch? Can I stay after? Can I come in in the morning? Um, so they're really taking advantage of that extra time or if they need more help. If you do not understand number one and number two for the warm up, what do you think I'm thinking right now? Yes. They know that I'm going to do everything I can to make them successful. And I think when they know that I'm going to do everything in my power to help them, they give me more. So they, they step up to that plate because they know, hey, this could be a good, good combination if everybody's doing their part. Um, and they see if they don't do their part, you know, they kind of see my reaction and, and how I'm trying to motivate them. And I, I, by the end of the year, I feel like kids just don't want to disappoint their teachers and, because you've built that connection with them. And they, they step up to the plate. Because I like to use easy numbers to make it I want my students to take ownership in their learning. So to um, instill that in them, I give my students um, target checklists. So for example, um, if there's seven targets in that unit, like a target might be something that, like dividing fractions. Um, they know, OK, I need to know this, 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 this. And um, here's my work for it. And then we give them little mini quizzes along the way. That way, they know exactly what they need to work on um, or what they're successful at. They kind of keep track of their own scores. So it's not me telling them what to, they need to work on. They know exactly for themselves what they should do. But it's not really about the grade anymore. It's about this is what I know really well, and this is what I still need to work on. Lance, Olivia, Micah, take out your planner. What's great about these little mini quizzes, they can retake them. And if they need to retake them a lot, they can. And they know that um, they can't just try it once and then, oh, I'm going to try it again the next day. They have to show us their proof of practice, which means they're doing a lot of math problems to show us that they get it. As soon as we started doing this, I thought, wow, this is going to be a paper blizzard. This is going to be a lot of kids having to retake things, and they're never going to do it. Uh, that totally the opposite. They were. I have kids coming in that are so excited. I need to retake this quiz. Can I do these ten problems? Yeah, sure. This is great. They come in more asking for help and asking for extra problems. And okay, now can I prove it to you, Ms. Moan, that I get it? And they're excited about it. If you did not finish, that's okay too, because you can always retake it. It's just a good way for me to kind of see where you're at. Formative assessments um, take place nonstop in my class. Um, for example, when students watch a video and then complete four problems on Moodle, that's just a quick way for me um, to see where the kids are at for it to adapt the lesson the next day. Um, but another thing is to actually do a quick quiz, which kind of goes along with those target checklists. And that um, goes on their grade. It's a great way to know, are they on the right track and they are just making little mistakes? Or do they really not understand the concept? Um, it's a great way for me to gauge, is it a lot of the class? Because then I need to rethink how I taught that whole lesson. Um, if it's just a few kids, it's great because then I know I can just target those specific kids and the kids who do get it, then here's what they're doing. 
Just gonna let you know right now the most common mistakes I'm seeing kids make. When you borrow, you're not putting the one in the right spot. So half the time in my class, they always hear me say, um, I love mistakes. Um, I say that actually quite often. And you know, the first time I say that, they look at me like, what is she talking about? No, that's bad. Um, but no, I love mistakes because um, we use them to talk about how to do problems. And um, sometimes uh, I will put problems on the board that all have mistakes and their job is to find them. They kind of pipe up and like, okay, where is it? Let's find it. And so again, it just is more motivation for them to kind of figure out how to do it. If I wanted to steal Quinn's donut, and I'm like, okay, fine, I'll only take a fourth of half of yours. Once you have that um, kind of that classroom atmosphere of where they're comfortable, um, and they know that, hey, we make lots of mistakes in here, and we help each other with them, and we talk about our mistakes, we find our favorite mistakes, um, then you know the expectation is, um, if you don't get something, then you have to do something about it. Anybody do the most common mistake? Four to the second is eight. No one. Sweet. Wow, we've come a long way. Um, and then we have work time. So the students are now doing the book assignment um, in my classroom rather than at home. The benefits to that I found uh, when they don't understand something, they don't just skip through it. They're asking, they're working with each other, they're communicating about the problems more. In my class I use small groups often. Um, a lot of times I like partner work. Um, it, it makes them communicate and talk about math. When we do a small group, there is a lot of, oh, why does that work, and having to explain yourself. And if you can really explain the problem to somebody else, you, you're truly understanding it. And if you can't explain it, well then hopefully they can. And if they can't, we gotta figure out what, what to do next. So it's never my goal to say, okay, these kids need to help each other. It's just, it's an automatic thing that happens. So, you know, when you get them excited about, okay, here's mistakes. Oh, what do, you, what do you think happened that's wrong? They just automatically go into the mode of helping each other. And so I think, it makes it even better in the environment because they want to help each other. You're not forcing them to help each other. And when they want to help each other, all of a sudden the dynamic of the whole class has changed. Everybody's feeling comfortable. They're feeling welcome. Um, it's not about, oh, that person doesn't get it, or, oh, they made a mistake. It's Everybody's comfortable about it. And the more kids that kids are comfortable, they, they learn so much more because they, I mean, all those barriers are gone. You didn't uh, put it in simplest form. While students are working on that book assignment, then I have the opportunity to help kids individually who maybe didn't get those problems on the Moodle right. Um, a lot of times it's a quick, oh, you made a simple mistake. Um, or the kids who really don't get it, I have that time to kind of sit with them and talk about it again. And then I even have them watch the video again. So they're, um, they're, they're getting that extra instruction and more, just more time with what some, some students need. Um, the students who are working on the book work, if they finish early, it's, it makes it easier to differentiate during class. The students who kind of get it can go, um, you can kind of partner them up to give them more challenging problems as they're doing it. Class sometimes looks chaotic because there's lots of different things going on, um, but it's kind of an organized chaos, so it's good. I will not help you with any problem at all until, what do you think? Until they can show me the beginning steps. They can tell me what the problem is about. They've read it a few times. They can tell me what the question is. When you leave my class, I need to set you up so you can solve problems, no matter what subject you're in, what type of job you're in. But you need to be able to be a good problem solver, and you need to be able to think all by yourself. Be right there. Um, I always tell them, you can hire me for $50 an hour to follow you around for the rest of your life, and I will do all your thinking for you, yes. And uh, they think that would be fun and then realize what, that would be horrible. So um, we do something called the MPI protocol and we basically um, developed that from the reading protocol that I know they've done um, in the past, the literacy leads. And what that does is it gives them kind of like a checklist of how to think, a checklist of how to do their problem solving. Um, and it has nothing to do with math, it's just, you know, have you read the problem a couple times? What do you know that's important? I would say the majority of the time when a student comes up and asks a question and I say, go do that, they don't come back. They usually then can figure it out on their own. So by students being able to show me that they're successful in um, the MPI protocol and showing me their thinking and they're using these thinking verbs, um, they're not only showing me that they can be successful to solve math problems in my class, but they're also going to be able to utilize this 
process to be able to solve problems outside of my class in other subjects or just in their daily life. Um, so it's really setting them up to be successful in school and outside of school as well. Another expectation for myself is just always being prepared to change things up. So there's so many times where, um, like I said earlier, there's sometimes organized chaos going on in my room. Sometimes I need to be prepared for the, all of a sudden half my class isn't ready for the day. So what am I going to do with them and what am I going to do with the others? So just always in my mind, just being ready to think on my toes and change things up if I need. Um, and that helps after you teach for a while, but y you just have to be ready for, for anything. <laughs> Did we write our homework down already? Yeah. yeah. What is it? What if my YouTube doesn't work tonight? So the satisfaction that you get from watching somebody be really excited that they are successful and you were a part of that happening is it's kind of addicting it's very it's very fun and um, my favorite thing ever is conference time when I have a lot of parents say what they're doing great in math well they love math this year they never liked math um, that's really fun for me because then I know the right things are, are going on in my class goodbye